In this video, I'm going to give you the four reasons that you might be suffering from either Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, and that's coming right up. My name's Chris Gascoigne, and welcome to Free From Crohn's and Colitis, the channel devoted to helping you reach remission of inflammatory bowel disease 100% naturally. Over the last three years, I've spent hours every single day researching, reading books, and working with numerous healthcare professionals. And in that time, I've made so much progress, and I've wanted to set up this channel to share with you guys exactly how I've done it. Don't you find it funny how there are some people out there who can seem to live however they want to. They can eat whatever rubbish they want to. You can go, to, go out to restaurants all the time, eat loads of snack food, eat loads of junk food, really stress about things in life, maybe not sleep properly, and yet they feel absolutely fine and they never get any sort of digestive issues. Yet, if you're a sufferer of Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, you have to always think about your diet, you have to think about your day's plans, whether you have the energy to do it. It could be one food that you eat that suddenly triggers you into experiencing a flare and getting all this bleeding and all these other symptoms. And even if you are a sufferer of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis and avoid all these confrontational arguments and you get sufficient sleep and you eat really well, you still experience an array of symptoms and it just doesn't seem fair. So in this video, I'm going to try and kind of clear up for you guys the four reasons as to why your disease might have come about and actually why you're stuck in like a flared situation and yet there are so many other people out there who live without a disease who seem to enjoy all the luxuries of life and get away with it. So reason number one, and perhaps one that you might not have been told about before, is interrupted nerve flow to the gut. This is so, so important, guys, and I made a whole video on this topic. If you want to check it out, I'll leave it above this video in a card if you want to check it out after watching this video. This is all about the communication pathway bet between your brain and your gut. This is one of the most important pathways of the body because one communicates with the other. And this happens down your spinal cord, something called your nervous system. What happens is we've got the central nervous system located down the spine between the brain and the gut. And in the gut, we've got an array of nerves and it's actually got a separate nervous system called the enteric nervous system. And there's actually more nerve endings within your digestive system than, you are in your, than there are in your brain. So when you experience pain there, this is a real sign as to why your pains are so severe if they're within your abdominal region. When we really think about it, the digestive system is just one big, long, muscular tube that doesn't work by itself. If you took the digestive system out of a person and just laid it there across a table, it wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't break down foods. It needs an electrical impulse. It needs stimulation from little things called neurons which come from the brain and what they do is they kind of create something called peristalsis which is this wave-like motion and it contracts the smooth muscle tissue in the bowel which gradually pushes things along the digestive system when you look at a worm move along the floor you notice how it moves one bit at a time it's exactly the same thing that's happening in our digestive system except it's coming from the brain via neurons traveling down the spine to your gut. So a restricted nerve flow, which means basically you have a spine that is out of the optimal position, which you might not have been aware of, but this day and age where we live in a very sedentary lifestyle, we have a spine that's kind of always in this position because we're looking down at our phones all the time. We end up living a life where we've always got a jeopardized nerve flow to the guts now. This may not be the number one reason as to why you experience symptoms of IBD, but it can definitely be a contributing factor. If you look at the picture above me, I always like to use this analogy of a conveyor belt. And actually, when we think about the digestive system, the digestive system itself is the conveyor belt. It's what's moving things across, you know, say, you know, we've got, if you think about it like a toy factory, and you've got the workers extracting nutrients off of the conveyor belt. So they're taking the toys off the conveyor belt. Well, if we think about it in this situation, the conveyor belt being the digestive system isn't what's actually contributing to these nutrients being moved along and you know out of the system. It's the electricity that powers the conveyor belt. And this electricity is the neurons in our nervous system that are traveling down our spine to our gut to contract the smooth muscle. So it's really important to know that 
The digestive system is almost here, and one step above it is the nervous system that controls it. So you really want to make sure you have a spine that's in the correct position. You can either go out and have an x-ray done, visit a chiropractor, or there are plenty of stretches you can do at home. Uh, again, I'm gonna teach you guys in a future video some of the best stretches to help to optimize your posture. So reason number two is hard to digest foods or just poor nutrition in general. I see so many people that advocate eating things like raw fruits and raw vegetables with this condition because they want to help to feed your microbiome, the fiber feeds your microbiome. The facts are that these are hard to digest foods which the human body really struggles to break down. They make their way to the lining of the large intestine and they can actually irritate the lining of it. And what is inflammation? It's a healing process happening along the lining of the kind of intestine, whether it be the small or large intestine. So any foods that get past a certain point and start rubbing against the lining that is inflamed, that's almost swollen, it's going to damage it further, it's going to prevent the healing process from occurring, and it's going to keep you in this state of kind of stress where you're always bleeding, and you know, you've got plenty of diarrhea, so we really need to pick and choose the right foods and the ones that have got the most nutrients in them. So as I said before, some of these main culprits can be really high fibrous foods, um, especially insoluble fiber, starch, and also a big culprit is resistant starch, which is where you have reheated a starchy food, so you might reheat a potato or carrot or parsnip. Then we've got nuts and seeds, which are pretty much always indigestible to humans. Even some of these nut butters, I think, would be hard on your system. Um, I would just avoid them completely if you're in a state where you're in a flare. I don't think these foods personally would have probably caused you to have inflammatory bowel disease, but they could be certainly keeping your body in a state of inflammation. And then all along your life, it's been really crucial that you get some of the most important nutrients in your body, like the fat-soluble hormones, which is vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K2. And then you get plenty of cholesterol and essential fatty acids from your diet. Those of you who don't get these nutrients from your diet kind of growing up for a long period of time, this might have resulted in kind of nutrient deficiencies which could have led to bowel disease. And then we've got foods like simple sugars and refined carbohydrates which offer almost no nutrition whatsoever and they'll steal nutrients from your body. And what will happen is because they'll spike insulin levels and blood sugar levels so fast, it will keep your body in a stress state, in a state of inflammation where it'll need to kind of heal between each meal and it's really going to slow the process so i think over time again this is another one where if you've eaten these foods for such a long period of time on a daily basis it's going to put this continual stress on your body and it may well have been one of the leading factors to causing either crohn's or colitis chronic stress and acute trauma now these are two big points and either one of them could quite have contributed to you developing bowel disease in the first place. Now, chronic stress, you know, with ongoing arguments, just getting worried about lots of things, maybe having really poor sleep for years on end, this is going to put your body in something called a sympathetic dominant state, which is a flight or fight situation. This is where blood drains away from your digestive system into the heart and gets pumped around to the peripheral muscles, so your arms, your feet, your hands, and your legs. And so what happens is digestion temporarily shuts down. So when this happens, obviously food isn't gonna be flowing through the digestive system properly. It's gonna hit a wall, it's gonna stop. It's gonna seem like a kind of an obstruction symptom. But really what's happening is your body is just too stressed. You need to bring those stress levels down. And again, you might think there's lots of people in life that experience this kind of high levels of this on a daily basis. But maybe if your body just couldn't handle it and you've gone on arguing for so many days on a, in a row in your life or got really stressed every single day for a number of years, this could quite well have led to you developing uh, inflammation inside of your body because you are, you've been in a sympathetic dominant state for such a period of time. And then acute trauma. This is probably one of the biggest ones I would suggest to most of you out there. In fact, this was the situation that happened with me that started my bowel disease. I had a uh, numerous travel immunizations. I think there was yellow fever, rabies, typhoid, and hepatitis B. And then within a couple of weeks of having these, I experienced really severe stomach pains, was going to the toilet about 25, 30 times a day, 
and then I ended up getting blood in the toilet and that's where my ulcerative colitis came from. So this acute trauma on the gut through maybe immunizations or antibiotics are a huge, have a huge part to play in this as well. If you've had a course of antibiotics and then quite soon after, maybe a couple of weeks to a month afterwards, you started experiencing these really severe symptoms, it could quite well have been the cause of your bowel disease. And then to bring it back to chronic stress just for a second, guys, when your body is stressed, your adrenal glands, which are these little organs sat on top of your kidneys, release a hormone called cortisol, which is an anti-inflammatory hormone. Um, and it performs loads of amazing roles in the body to kind of bring things under control. But the problem with this hormone is it's catabolic, which means it needs to steal nutrients from the body in order to perform the amazing roles it does to bring in inflammation levels under control. So those of you who may have had really achy joints from over the years, maybe before you were diagnosed with bowel disease, this is basically the cortisol stealing all the cells and tissue from your joints because it deems that area as least important to survival. And it's used that in its production to bring inflammation levels under control in other areas of the body. So what I'm getting at is these chronic, chronically elevated stress levels where this cortisol release is happening so much over time through maybe argument, ar arguing all the time or not sleeping properly, just loads of confrontations and getting stressed and anxious about life. That is going to lead to this catabolic process where the body continuously breaks down, tissues and cells are being used up and it could well end up leading to digestive issues. Now, many people will message me and say, Chris, what about genetic reasons? Could that be a cause behind why I've got inflammatory bowel disease? Because it seemed like I was born with it. Well, in my honest opinion, you're more likely to be experiencing missing microbes in your body. This is where you may have not been born naturally. You may have been born via C-section. You might have been given a really early dose of antibiotics or a really early immunization that's triggered some immune response in your body. Also, your parents might not have kind of had the really healthy gut flora to pass on to you. There's so many different reasons from the moment of birth that you could have a very sterile gut that could be vulnerable and jeopardize your digestive process long term if that digestive system isn't filled with the appropriate gut flora early on in life. As I was talking about earlier, the nervous system has got a huge part to play, but also the gut communicates with the nervous system via the bacteria that's present there. It creates a feedback loop up our spine, which is almost tells us that it's time to eat. And what happens is with these bacteria present in our gut, they start creating all these digestive enzymes and things like bile, stomach acid, they communicate with the body as to when to produce them. So it's really important that our inner body understands when it's time for us to eat, gets us in this relaxed state and starts to secrete all these digestive juices so that we can digest our foods properly. So if you don't have the raw materials almost, you don't have the terrain that any normal human out there has to be able to break down and digest really any foods, you're always going to struggle. And this could, be, could have been happening, like I said, from a very early age. This also leads back to what I said at the very start of this video, which is why there are so many people out there that can get away with so much, they can eat so much rubbish and feel absolutely fine. It's because there are so many of us out there that have such little microbial diversity in our digestive tract in order to break down and digest all these foods and to communicate with the brain properly to tell it when kind of properly to start the peristaltic motion and to start pushing things through the digestive tract. So what are the big things we can take away from watching this video? Well, I think number one, the main thing is go back and listen to what I said about each four of the different causes and understand how closely they can all be linked to one another. One can quite easily cause another one and I think this is a really important point to note. And more importantly than anything, go back to the time that you were diagnosed and think what happened in your life, maybe the weeks or months before that. Was there a period of ongoing stress? Were you given maybe an immunization or a course of antibiotics and then suddenly you've ended up with bowel disease? You know, was there maybe a loss in your family, you know, a real trauma that it hit you? Or maybe it might, it might have been a physical trauma on your gut, like you've actually been hit on the outside what went on before you were diagnosed start to almost become a detective 
of your own diagnosis. Also, it's worth noting that you can enter this world and through absolutely no fault of your own, you can start experiencing digestive symptoms. Think in terms of this gut flora and how you were born, whether you were given the best start in life, you know, were you breastfed or were you bottle fed? Did you play around in the dirt a lot? Did, were you exposed to lots of bacteria growing up? Or were you one of these sterile babies that was kind of kept inside in a very clean environment? You know, do you have that diversity to be able to fight off a lot of things? Or are, is your immune system relatively weak because you've been kept from it? And then in my opinion, those who get diagnosed later on in life, maybe in your teens, your 20s or later, it's because of these accumulative stressors that I've suggested in this video, all happening alongside each other that's gradually got to the point where your body is becoming symptomatic it's getting damaged and it's having to inflame a certain part of your digestive system to warn you away from using that part for a while while it needs to heal and we just don't get the signs and we don't really know what's going on so we continue doing what we've always done and it stays in that inflamed process hence the flare and hence why so many of us struggle to get over it so question of the day guys was your diagnosis a result of any of the four points I mentioned in this video or do you think it was something else? Let me know down below in the comments, I'm really interested to know. Just before I leave you, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'm coming out with two videos every single week on Monday and Thursday at 5pm UK time. I've got some really valuable information that I want to share with all of you guys and I really want to help you to learn the cause and what you can do to overcome a flare and get into remission of inflammatory bowel disease make sure you ring that notification bell because it's so important you get notified on every single new upload. And finally, YouTube's recommended video for you will be the video above me. And to my right hand side will be my suggested video for you based on this video you've just watched. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope it helped you out. Take care. I'll see you again very shortly.